In today's Yumi, we are going to work with rounding numbers using a vertical number line. Our objective today will be to round a given decimal to any place using place value understanding and the vertical number line. We will be using our vertical number lines that you see here and decomposing numbers using the place value chart that you see at the bottom of the page here. Before rounding with decimals, we are going to review by rounding whole numbers. We are going to use our number line to help round our number 53. In our first example, we are rounding the number 53 to the nearest tens place. To help us understand and reinforce our place values needed for the vertical number line's minimum and maximum values, we will first need to decompose the number by place value using the place value chart. The number 53 is composed of 5 tens and 3 ones. So we will take this number and decompose it using our table. So we have 5 tens and 3 ones. When thinking of our decomposition of 53, we're looking at what will help us round the number to the nearest 10. Since we are rounding to the nearest 10, we will go 110 more than the 5 tens that we have, which will give us 6 tens. Another way of saying 6 tens would be the number 60. We will make this our maximum value. For our minimum value, we're thinking that 53, since it's composed of 5 tens and 3 ones, the minimum value will be 50. Now looking at our vertical number line, we need to find a value that is between or halfway from 50 to 60. Thinking of our 5 tens and 3 ones, we, can, we should know that 5 ones is half of a group of our next place value. So our halfway point between 50 and 60 would be the number 55 because it is composed of 5 tens and 5 ones. Using our vertical number line, we will look at the number that we're actually rounding 53. We need to figure out where 53 would fall along this number line. We know that it is not greater than 55 because our halfway point has 5 tens and 5 ones. Our number 53 has 5 tens and only 3 ones. Three ones are less than five ones. So we know that our number has to fall between 50 and 55. So the number 53 would be placed right in between, showing five tens and three ones. Seeing that our number 53 does, is not greater than 55, shows that when rounding this number to the tens place, we end up with our minimum value of 50. So rounding the number 53 to the nearest tens place will round to the number 50, which would be 5 tens and 0 ones with our minimum value. Moving on to our concept with decimals, we are going to round 1 and 643 thousandths to the nearest whole number, tenth, and hundredth. Just like in our previous problem, first we're going to strategically decompose our number. Since we are first rounding to the nearest whole number, we will, we will write our number in our place value chart as we see it. We have 1 1, 6 tenths, 4 hundredths, and 3 thousandths. To round our number to the nearest tenths place, we need to strategically decompose our number using the tenths place. So, instead of just having six tenths, we actually have sixteen. Then we look at our hundredths place. We still have four hundredths and three thousandths. We're going to do a similar strategy for when we break it down to the hundredths place. Instead of starting with the tenths, we will start with the hundredths. We actually have 164 hundredths and 3 thousandths. As you can see, it is not the decimal that is moving, 
It is the place values themselves. Now we will fill in our vertical number lines based on what we are rounding our number to. In our first number line, we'll be rounding to the nearest whole number. So we have to create our maximum and minimum values based on our first number in the table. So in the table, we see that we have 1 as our whole number. So our maximum value will be 1 more than the 1, 1 that we have, which would make it 2. Our minimum value would stay the same with just 1. Now, to find our halfway point between one hole and two holes, we would think that halfway would be 1 and 5 tenths because 5 tenths is half to creating another group which would give us our two holes. Now we need to look at our number 1 and 643 thousandths and since we are focusing on the tenths place we're really going to zone in on this 1 and 6 tenths. Because we have 1 and 6 tenths we can use our halfway point to see that 6 tenths is greater than 5 tenths. Because of this, we know that 1 and 6 tenths would fall between 1 and 5 tenths and 2 holes. Because of this, we can say that 1 and 6 tenths would round to our maximum value of 2 holes. Now we are going to round the same number, but looking at the tenths place when we are rounding. When we are choosing our maximum and minimum values, this is going to be different than our whole number since we are focusing on the tenths place. As you can see in our table when we decomposed, now instead of looking at it as 1, 1, and 6 tenths, we are going to look at it as a group of 16 tenths. This means that our maximum value will be 1 tenth more than 16. That would be 17 tenths. So we're going to write it on our vertical number line, 16 tenths, which is still the same as having 1 and 7 tenths when regrouped. Using that same strategy, we're going to make our minimum value 16 tenths, which is also the same as having 1 and 6 tenths. To find our middle value, or the halfway point, we would look at 16 tenths plus 5 hundredths. This is because 5 hundredths is the halfway point between giving us another group of tenths. Now we will place our number on our vertical number line using our tenths place. Now what we have is 16 tenths and 4 hundredths. So looking at our vertical number line, 16 tenths plus 4 hundredths would fall before 16 tenths plus 5 hundredths. This shows that 16 tenths plus 4 hundredths is equivalent to having 1 and 64 hundredths. Since that does not meet the halfway point, that means we are going to use our minimum value of 1 and 6 tenths. For our final example using the number 1 is 643 thousandths, we will now round it to the hundredths place. Since we are focusing on rounding to the hundredths place, we are going to rename our number using our focus as the hundredths place. In our table, that shows that we have 164 hundredths plus 3 thousandths. 
keep in mind this is still equal to 1 and 643 thousandths. When making our maximum hundredths value, we are going to use 165 hundredths because that is one group more than our 164 hundredths in our table. And then our minimum value will be 164 hundredths. To make our middle value, we're going to use our halfway point as 164 hundredths plus 5 thousandths. Our number is going to fall in between 164 hundredths and 164 hundredths plus 5 thousandths. That means when looking at our number when it is rounded, since it does not reach the halfway point, our number will round to 164 hundredths. To review, in this video, we learned about decomposition of numbers and understanding that we aren't moving a decimal, we're merely moving the place value that we're focusing on. We also used a vertical number line to round our number using those maximum minimum, and halfway values to help us understand where our number would round to. Finally, we also rounded decimal fractions, taking a number that included whole numbers and decimal fractions and rounding it to a variety of place values depending on what the task asked us. I hope this has helped you with using a vertical number line to round, and happy rounding!